Hello students, you're welcome to another time with the Rock Tutors Learning Made AC. My name is Cheson. Today, we're going to be looking at some questions in chemistry, the theory, the theory aspect of it. For students who are preparing for various exams like WAIC, NECO, NAPTEP and the like, and please don't forget to hit the subscription button and please put on or turn on the notification bell so that you'll be promptly not notified whenever we post a new content. And don't also forget to like, to share and to make your comments. Thank you very much. Now, let's get started with the very first question. The very first question says, Define an acid according to the Lewis concept. We know that acid can be defined in several ways. There is the Bronsted-Lowry theory of acid, there is the Arrhenius theory of acid, and also there is the G.N. Lewis's theory of acid. So the question here asks us to define what an acid is according to the Lewis concept. According to Lewis concept, an acid is defined as a substance that can accept lone pairs of electrons from substances, usually a Lewis base, to form a new compound. Once again, a Lewis acid is a substance that can accept or that accept lone pairs of electrons from other substances, usually Lewis bases, to form new compounds. That is what a Lewis acid is all about. If you go to Roman figure 2, we are asked to give one example of a Lewis acid. Now, let's take a look. Examples. Examples. Examples of Lewis acids. There are several examples of Lewis acid. You are just asked to name one here. I will give you maybe two or three. An example of a Lewis acid is aluminum chloride, AlCl3. Another example of Lewis acid is boron trichloride, BCl3. Another example is boron trifluoride, BF3. Not only that, don't forget that cations are usually Lewis acid. Cations like hydrogen ion, cations like potassium ion. So I've given you five. So all these, aluminum chloride, boron chloride, boron trichloride, boron trifluoride, hydrogen ion, that's a proton, and potassium ion, all of these are examples of Lewis acid. Let's go to the second question. That's 1B. 1B says, explain sorting out in soap Preparation in chemistry, soap preparation is also called saponification. And what does saponification entail? Saponification entails eating of fat and oil with an alkali, like maybe sodium hydroxide. If you want to produce, if you want to produce a hard, if you want to produce a hard soap, or with potassium hydroxide, if you want to produce a soft soap. So saponification or soap making involves eating fat and oil with alkali. That's basically what saponification is. Now, the question is first off to find, to explain what salting out is in salt preparation. Salting out, simply explained, is a process whereby during preparation of soup, small amount or certain amount of concentrated sodium chloride, otherwise called brine, is added to the soap mixture. And what is the essence of adding the concentrated sodium chloride so as to reduce the solubility of the soap to ensure that the soap is separated in a cake-like manner from the rest? That is basically what sorting out is all about. Sorting out is the process whereby certain amount of concentrated sodium chloride, that is NaCl, or brine is added to the soap mixture to reduce the solubility of the soap or to make the soap to separate out of the mixture. That is the meaning of salting out. Let's go to 
1C. 1C says state the reagent and condition necessary for the following conversion. What is the reagent necessary for the conversion of C2H2? That's ethane to form this is silver carbide. So we know that before ethane or terminal alkynes can undergo substitution reaction, it must react with a particular reagent, two reagents actually, ammoniaca solution of silver triosonitrate 5. That is the reagent ammoniaca solution of silver triosonitrate 5. Because you can see the silver here. So which means we need aqueous ammonia here. That's talking about silver triosonitrate 5 dissolved in aqueous ammonia. That is the meaning of ammonia solution of silver triosonitrate 5. That is the reagent. Not only that, the condition necessary is heat. It has to be applied a high temperature. It's either you see application of heat or a high temperature. So that is for option, that is for question one. C. Let's go to 1D1. The question says, why does the element with atomic number 18 not have an oxide? Let's start with what kind of element are we talking about here? Atomic number 18. We know an element with atomic number 18 if we use the knowledge of a periodic table. All right, so the next question. Question 1D1. Why does the element with atomic number 18 not have an oxide? First things first. Let's find out which element are we talking about. That's argon. Argon, if you use the knowledge of our periodicity, it is argon that has atomic number 18. And we know that argon belongs to the group of elements called noble or rare gases. And what do we know about them? Noble and rare gases are a group of very stable and inert element. Inert means unreactive. What makes them unreactive? Because they have that stable octet structure. What does the octet structure mean? They have eight electrons in their outermost shell. And that octet structure confers stability to them. It makes them to be stable. They have completely filled outermost shell electron and because they already have completely filled atomic electron they cannot accept any other electron from other elements hence they can't react with an oxygen for example to form an oxide that is why an element with atomic number 18 cannot form an oxide because it is an inert element an inert element is unreactive and an element that is unreactive cannot react with an oxygen, for example, to form an oxide. That is the correct answer for question 1D1. Let's go to question 1D2. The question says, explain why chlorine one oxide has a low melting point. Let's see chlorine one oxide. Chlorine one oxide is Cl2. Oh, this is chlorine one oxide. Chlorine one oxide. Or you can call it dichloride oxide. Chlorine one oxide or dichloride oxide. Now, let's ask ourselves what type of bond is present in chlorine one oxide? A very weak intermolecular force of attraction. And because of the weak force of attraction, that holds the molecule of chlorine one oxide together that is what is responsible for the low melting point of chlorine one oxide that is all chlorine one oxide has a low melting point because it possesses weak force of attraction that is hard let's go to the next question that's one e and the question says, state two differences between an electrochemical cell and an electrolytic cell. If we have it in tabular form like this, electrochemical cell, electrochemical cell, and here, electrolytic cell. We have to state two differences between them. Number one. 
in electrochemical cell anode is the negative electrode negative electrode while cathode is the positive electrode and the reverse is the case here here anode is the positive electrode anode is positive electrode and the cathode is negative electrode that's the first one not only that in an electrochemical cell there is presence of salt bridge salt bridge is present salt bridge is present whereas in an electrolytic cell salt bridge is absent salt bridge is absent that's number two not only that number three in electrochemical cell there are two electrolytes two different electrolytes and in electrolytic cell only one electrolyte only one electrolyte is present not only that number four in electrochemical cell the electrodes are in different compartments electrodes are in different compartments different compartments while in electrolytic cell the electrodes are in the same compartment electrodes are in the same compartment compartment so these are some of the differences between an electrochemical cell and an electrolytic cell first things first anode is the negative electrode and cathode is the positive electrode in an electrochemical cell the reverse is the case for electrolytic cell in an electrolytic cell the anode is the positive electrode while cathode is the negative electrode don't forget in electrochemical cell salt bridge is present while in electrolytic cell there is absence of salt bridge in electrochemical cell two different electrolytes are involved while in electrolytic cell it contains only one electrolyte not only that in electrochemical cell the electrodes talking about the anode and the cathode are in different compartments whereas in electrolytic cell both the anode and cathode the electrodes are in the same compartment these are some of the differences between electrochemical cell and electrolytic cell now let's go to the next question which is 1f and the question says how does the trend in ionization energy affect the reactivity of group 1 elements we know that group 1 elements are called alkali metals and what is ionization energy ionization energy is defined as the energy required to remove one to remove electron if you say one if you are going to introduce one then we are going to talk about force ionization energy but let's limit our definition to just ionization energy ionization energy is the energy required to remove electron from a gaseous atom that is what ionization is or you can define ionization energy as the minimum energy required to remove the most loosely bound electron from a gaseous atom or from an atom in gaseous state now that we've defined or known what ionization energy is how do how does ionization energy how does it vary in the periodic table ionization energy increases from left to right across the period due to increase in nuclear charge whereas ionizing energy decreases down the group so which means as we are going down group one the ionization energy decreases and what does that mean when the ionization energy decreases it means that low lower amount or little amount of energy is required to remove the electron from such gaseous atom in group one 
and the lower the amount of energy required to remove the electron, the more easily such an element loses electron and the more readily an element in group 1 loses electron, the more reactive it is. So, ionizing energy decreases down the group, so which means as we are going down group 1, the ionizing energy is decreasing as we are going down and that decrease in ionizing energy leads to increase in the tendency of the element to lose electron and by extension that leads to increase in their reactivity that's how you explain that so that is the correct answer for f let's go to g we are to define the term molecular formula now molecular formula can be defined as the actual number of the atoms of an element in a molecule once again molecular formula can be defined as the actual number of atoms of an element in a molecule that's the definition of molecular formula once again molecular formula is defined as the actual number of atoms of an element in a molecule that's the definition of molecular formula let's go to question h Roman figure one and it says state which of the gases that's between hydrogen gas and ammonia would deviate more from ideal behavior now between hydrogen gas and ammonia first things first both hydrogen and, and ammonia deviate from ideality but the question is asking which of them actually deviates more from ideal behavior it's definitely ammonia ammonia deviates more from ID behavior than hydrogen. And Roman figure 2 is asking us, what is the reason for that? Why is it that ammonia deviates more from ID behavior than hydrogen? We know that ammonia has a stronger or has a higher intermolecular force of attraction. The higher or the stronger the force of attraction in a particular gas, the more such a gas deviates from ideal behavior. That is the reason. Because ammonia possesses a stronger force of attraction. We know that ammonia possesses, apart from the fact that ammonia possesses covalent bond, it also possesses hydrogen bond. And we know that hydrogen bond is a relatively strong intermolecular force of attraction. So, which is stronger than the weak van der Waals forces that hold hydrogen gas together. So, because of the strong force of attraction in ammonia molecule, it deviates more from ideal behavior. That is the reason for choosing ammonia. That is the answer to H Roman figure 2.